node benefits. So this one, like I said, we just kind of went over those barely last week. Uh, let's see. So some of these they haven't given. Those like Divine um, is... Yeah, still, still, they're, it looks like they're still working on that one. Yeah, it says uh, they are focused on faith and skill equipment augments, so they will enhance your gear. Yeah, pretty sure, like, blessings and stuff like that, so. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to know I've reached the Metropolis stage. Unlock the linked economy superpower. Economic nodes of the superpower share their auction house listings with others. So Stephen did, did talk about how other nodes that are within that. Um, like I said, depending on that on that image that we looked at, if there's going to be little nodes within that zone of influence, or if that zone of influence somehow widens enough to like encompass three ZOIs. I don't know like, how they're supposed to do that, but uh, let's see. Yeah, so economic practically. Um, up to two economic metropolises may be linked in this manner. Uh, metropolises, uh, level economic nodes enable worldwide sell prices for auction houses across Vera. Items listed in the linked e economic node can be bid on from any other link economic node. So pretty much what I'm just getting from this is, you know, if you want to have access to an auction house that spans a bunch of area with a lot more people, you know, you might you might be able to get a better priced item going to an economic metropolis um, or just one within its zone of influence. Um, you know, so it's like, oh, like I want to go buy wood so I can craft. Um, you know, it'd probably be best to travel to that economic node and buy the wood there because things would be cheaper there, or supposedly cheaper. And military nodes. Ooh, bounty hunters. <laughs> Reduced or duration. So corruption, I guess, to kind of spit this out. So corruption is something where... It's corruption is their way of um, stopping uh, uh, grievance, like grievance, like player grievances. Uh, so when you're grieving a player, you're constantly camping their body. Um, you know, you're killing a bunch of like, you know, so you're doing a bunch of stuff. And it's bad, and you start getting corruption. And the higher your corruption goes, um, you might start losing stuff in your bags. Um, even gear. You lose skill and stat points, you get yeah. lower health, you have lower mana, weaker. like everything starts to degrade. Yeah. So so that's so you pretty much become easier and easier and easier and easier to kill and you're losing a bunch of stuff. And a player can take your stuff. So if you are grieving enough that you lose that really nice chess piece, someone can take that chess piece from you. Is what I'm is what I'm I'm getting at as far as like that goes. So but it looks like military nodes, your your duration of that corruption is a lot less. So I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of rogues on the road. <laughs> corruption has a visible effect on your appearance, too. Right. So I hate to see what you look like. <laughs> if well, you're like a corrupt SOB, you know. Well, the worst thing I can think of is you start looking like an undead rogue. <laughs> That's the worst thing you I look can all think creepy. of. Yeah. Dying. <laughs> uh, let's see. Scientific nodes that have reached Metropolis stage unlock the teleportation. So teleportation. So it looks like auction houses for economic is superpower, and teleportation is scientific. Um, so let's see here. Citizens of Metropolis scientific nodes may teleport between the Metropolis and any of its vassal nodes. Regardless of the stage of the vassal nodes, so long as the vassal node is not at war. Um, and I know he didn't mention that about the sieges about this. So the only way um, that that war or a siege can happen is if a player really works at it 
and then they get and then for whatever they did they got a a siege voucher um and they can activate it and it has to hit like so literally if we're in that that area misty and you'll see this thing pop up supposedly and it's like would you like to join you know would you like to join the siege it'll tell you the date the time the place just all that stuff and if you can make that date and time place you join and i think as far as what i'm hearing from the sieges they are going to be crazy events right now it's 250 players versus 250 players um, and both sides get this notice that somebody has just declared war on you and you're going to have a siege and everyone better prepare themselves. So, and I'll people, just sell them all the weapons and armor. Right. Yeah, you <laughs> could definitely do that. Like I said, I, an MMORPG is supposed to be the aspect, you know, like a lot of people think right now, and I'm going to go on a little rant here. The people, what the thing is, is, you know, We've been so groomed right now with MMOs, and I think this is why Steven and his crew are so just over the BS, is in-game, like, I mean, like World of Warcraft, especially now after this pre-patch, you, you level up, and quests, all that stuff, dungeon, very linear, very linear. They've, I mean, they've added some things where you could do stuff, but still, linear progression, and then you do a dungeon if you want or not, but then you get to end game and then it's just dungeons, then raids, well dungeons, mythics, raids, and that's it. Like it's just, that's it. But what, like what, what this game's going with, Ashes of Creation's going with is, you know, they're giving, they're giving the ability to someone like you, Missy, to go like, I don't like PVP. Like I don't like war, but I'll I'll get I'll make the gun for you. I'll make the sword for you. You know, you pay me. I'm not fighting your battles. You're fighting your stuff. So you know, and that's what an MMORPG should be. Like, you know, the scientists, the philosophers, you know, they're all doing their own things. But these military people are out there doing their own things. And the thing is, is the economic nodes are probably like, you know. Uh, you know, we'll make money off this war because see, because the military is going to attack a scientific. And I wonder, and he did say that their value, like attacking somebody, has to be lucrative, right? So if a military node is like, hey, if we attack the scientific node, it says we're going to get. I mean, who knows? Maybe the military node gets teleportation or something. You know, for a certain amount of time for winning that, winning over that scientific node. Or I can already see military nodes are going to be, they're going to be annoying. They're going to be the annoying people because they're going to be the ones that want the metropolis. And uh, that scientific node is uh, kind of in the way. So they're going to be combating everybody. I think yes. they're just they're your, they're the type of people I think that are the ones in other games that you're just trying to like harvest some wood and they're coming and ganking you over and over and over again <laughs> yeah and i think with that I, I don't think there's there's probably gonna be open world pvp in some aspect but i i think you have to enable it but yeah we'll have to we'll have to see how that actually works but i think corruption's gonna play it you know that's gonna, know. that's what keeps you from doing that because if you're the type of person that does that in other MMOs and you want to be an annoying jerk, then that's, that's going to harm them more so than you. They are going to start losing things, not you. Yeah. So I guess, and that's a good way to keep that kind of behavior under some sort of control. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see here. I guess if we don't, you know how that makes me cranky. <laughs> right. So I guess if we want to move down to uh, zone of influence here, um, like I said, well, actually, you know, like like I said, we're. I guess we can do the zone of influence here. Note advancement. Like I said, you know, we're kind of regurgitating already what Stevens already talked about. I don't think we need to really go deep, deep dive into uh, 
every little thing, um, unless we want to. One thing is, well, one thing that's interesting, it says each node can form into towns, but are limited by their neighbors. Yeah. The nodes have different levels of advancement. There can only be so many of each level. Think of this as advanced settlements needing more elbow room. Nodes encompass more land as they grow and will require more effort to be sustained. The system is a main driver for change in the world because it creates scarcity. As nodes advance in stages of growth, they will lock out neighboring nodes from progressing and will absorb their zones of influence. Uh, so that's what happens. We'll okay. absorb the ones around us. So yeah, so right here that means, so if this one gets bigger, it'll absorb this one and this one probably. And if it gets really big, yeah. then it'll go absorb this one and this one. And then if it gets really big, it might absorb, you know. So, okay, so that answers our question there. So I guess we will yeah. at least read these little pieces, or Missy will go ahead and read. So I guess you want to do the next one. The main thing that differentiates us from other MMOs is that we have a living, breathing, reactive world. Our world is separated into zones, which are then separated into what we call nodes. Nodes are sort of invisible zones of influence that listen to everything that a player does. So as players gain experience from killing things, gain experience from doing quests, gain experience through crafting things, the node is also gaining that experience. Once a node gains enough experience, it levels up and then starts to attract NPCs to it. Which I know those NPCs are going to have quests. They're going to have probably different items you could buy. Um, so it's pretty cool, right? So you could be like, oh, hey, guys, let's work this up. And then you go and you do it. And then it's like, oh, now we just got 20 more quests, you know, to go adventure over and, here, you know. And like they said, there is not a space where you will move in to do something and no node will get that experience. So there's no dead zone. So whatever you do is affecting some node somewhere. Yep. Because I read also back there that if, you know, I'm working on my economic node, but I wander off into the scientific node and I start doing something there, they gain that experience for their scientific node, what I'm doing. It doesn't even have to be a citizen. Anyone that comes in there and does anything in that zone contributes to your node. Yep. 